trying to think of a way to make this really interesting given what I have. So with this RCA slash Optimus STS-1230 project that I'm doing, it's a 12 inch three-way vintage Radio Shack speaker. And what I've got going on right here is an empty box. Um, I took out the drivers so that I could do all my measurements for internal bracing and also to see if the drivers fit that I chose for this project. So I'd like to kind of take this opportunity to maybe answer some of those questions that the DIY people out there um, might be asking or people who Maybe they're not into, you know, audiophile stuff or building speakers, but maybe they have an old set of speakers that they want to try to upgrade. Um, so I think that probably the easiest way for me to do that is to kind of go through it incrementally, try to approach each topic individually. And this is a really good kind of point to do it at because um, I've marked up my wood in that. I still have to cut it up, uh, so I'm not doing any internal bracing right now. Um, I still have the you know insulation that I had ripped out of the inside, which was just on the back panel, so that's easy enough to put back in. The other big part of this project is putting these uh, monster crossovers in there. So logically, that would be probably one really cool video is to say or to figure out um, you know does just changing a crossover make a difference right original cabinet unmodified original driver so my thought process was to you know definitely put this in there this cool crossover uh, that was actually a find on eBay and it was, it's a La Spada crossover. And even though these, these are um, kind of just off the shelf generic crossovers, they are super expensive. Um, so yeah, I do want to check that out, see if just changing the crossover will make a difference. But what about changing the drivers? Does changing the drivers make a difference? Because that might be something that someone would try before a crossover, right? is especially if a woofer is like dry rotted and blown out or something um or a tweeter's blown out because that's real common so i guess you know the thing is it's like okay well can we just buy you know stuff from parts express or wherever and put drivers in a cabinet and expect to see an improvement um with everything else being the same just being stock stock crossover no bracing you know limited insulation so i think that that's probably a cool way to go about it to accomplish that what i will need to do though is i need to modify this hole for the tweeter just a little bit so that i can get the new tweeter in there that won't take much i think i can file a notch in it or something it's just room enough for one of the terminals to go by the mid-range that one fits okay the way it is the woofer is actually the biggest problem with this cabinet because the original woofer that came out of here is a different shaped basket than the replacement that I've gotten uh, from Parts Express, which is a Dayton Classic woofer. So let me show you the difference between those two woofers. All right, so these are the two woofers. This one is the original um, Radio Shack woofer. And you know it's a woofer because it says it right on the back. <laughs> I get a kick out of that. They say it's woofer mid-range tweeter in case they get them mixed up, I guess. I'm not sure. Um, and then this is the Dayton Classic. So this is a little bit beefier speaker. It's got a bigger motor structure, vented pole piece, bigger coil. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, it's not a ton better probably, but it's probably a little bit better. And the difference in the basket though, is like if you look at this basket shape in here, it's square. This one 
is just slightly tapered. So even though they're the same outside diameter and the screw holes line up, the mounting hole is a little bit different. And you can actually kind of see that when I go like that. Okay. All right. So I got to open up these holes. <laughs> Not looking forward to doing that. It's a big hole. But that's the first step because probably if it was me and I had an old set of speakers, especially if the, you know, the drivers are, uh, were, dry, were all blown or dry rotted or something, um, I would probably be switching out the woofer first. So I definitely got to get that hole fixed and try that. So I'll probably just put that cabinet back together with the woofer try it with the original tweeter and mid-range and then the new woofer see what that sounds like measure it um and then start you know mixing and matching the drivers um as it makes sense you know like what would happen if i just put a better tweeter in it or what happens if i put a better tweeter and woofer in it right so i'll try to figure out those uh little topics break them down so that we can check them out and see if it really makes a difference you know uh, simple stuff like like the crossover you know i mean if i put that crossover and i switch a crossover and use all the original drivers will it sound better i don't know if i leave the original crossover and then put in all these new drivers will it sound better <laughs> let's find out um we're definitely going to find out in the end what this sounds like with the new crossover and all new drivers and bracing and insulation etc but what about in between that point right that's what i want to figure out so anyway thanks for uh joining me today as i start to do this yeah really not looking forward to it but that's the first step is i gotta gut the other cabinet um with the exception of the crossover that's in there and then open up the hole so that the speakers will fit all right Okay, so now the drivers are out of them, the insulation is out of both of them, and it's time to start modifying some holes. So first things first, probably the easiest thing I can do is open up the, uh, the hole for the tweeter. So I'll go ahead and do that now. I'll show you what the problem is, and then I'll go ahead and correct it. So here's our new tweeter. And the only problem with this is, The old tweeter, okay, two things. Number one is that the holes are different. So they both have three holes, but they don't line up. This one's a little bit smaller in diameter. The holes I'm not quite as concerned about as I am where the terminals are. So the terminals on this speaker are on the bottom, which you'll see the cutout here at the bottom. This tweeter, they're at either side of it, left or right. So what happens when I put this in here is that basically I can put it in here and use this area for one of these terminals. Then the other terminal ends up, you know, just hitting the circle, the opening. And I could feasibly mount it like that it kind of looks upside down, but I could do it. But my biggest issue with that is that if I do it that way, 
because it's not all the way up, you can see the screw hole. And I don't like that. So I think that I can, regardless of how I mount it, which direction, I want to make sure I'm covering up all the screw holes, which technically this tweeter will do. So I just got to open this up. And I think what I'll do, since I'd, I'd like this hole to be at the top, one of the holes to be at the top anyway, so I'll try to put the notch for this terminal um, in such a way that I can mount it like that. So in this position, it looks pretty good, and it's got a hole facing up at the top. You can still see that screw hole. And if I reverse these terminals, it looks like one of them is landing up in this corner, and the other one is directly opposite it over here. Not sure if you can see that real good or not, but it looks like this terminal is going to be roughly 11 o'clock. So I got to make a notch there. So hopefully you can see that. We got this little mark up in here. That's where I'm going to put my notch. I'm going to use my handy dandy Japanese steel cut everything knife. Well, let's see if this works. So I've got my notch cut in there now. Let's see if this guy fits in there better. Gotta find my up arrow. There it is. Much better. Yep. Now it covers up that, that hole. Perfect. Success. Now before I go and do the second cabinet, I'm not just gonna use this tweeter, the same tweeter I used there. I wanna make sure that the other tweeter is identical, okay? I don't wanna go making two notches if I don't have to. So these, these actually do look pretty similar. So it'll probably be the same, but I just want to make sure. My terminal is right here, up at the top, about 11 o'clock. Now this, that ought to do the trick. Ah, yes. See, and my top screw even lines up. So theoretically,
I can put the top screw in there and make new holes for the bottom. And those ones are covering up the holes pretty good. So I'm not too worried about it. I like to use a center punch, pretty much invaluable. Um, and it works really nice on wood too. Now on the upside, this should be the only set of holes I need to drill in the front. Okay, I'm going to show you my, my uh, shameful fabrication here. So this hole is actually just so close, I may even have to wind up using like a dab of hot glue when I put the screw in there just to make sure it doesn't hog out that hole too much. Uh, these other ones look pretty good though. Alright, next is the woofer. I'm not looking forward to that. Well, the idea now is to put this onto the baffle and try to remark it to make sure I'm getting it just exactly the size I need it. So theoretically, it would work like this if you had like a spacer behind it. But since I don't want to make a spacer, I want to open up that hole more. I guess I'll go back to the old chisel tip. see this line pretty shiny oh yeah that's a big old big old hole there I gotta try to open up so what I want to do at this point is now that I've got that that outline I probably start with the easiest way I can think of which would be Maybe the file, you know, maybe file that out. It doesn't have to be, I mean, it's a bigger hole, but because it's tapered, it doesn't have to be necessarily square. A drum sander would be best, like on a drill, but I don't have that. So looking at this, I'm guessing it would be about an eighth of an inch around here that I need to get rid of. Let's go ahead and measure this. So it's 10 and 5 eighths diameter. So essentially what I need is um, to make 11 inches, I'd be taking, what, 3 16ths of an inch off all the way around. Yeah, so essentially all I need to do is make a, kind of scribe a line that's um, 3 16ths of an inch off this edge. Now if I had, gosh, yeah, 
if I had a router, <laughs> I could actually just let it ride on the inside and, you know, at least get this face knocked down a little bit. But I don't have a router either, as I'm sure a lot of you don't. So, and some of you that have watched older videos of mine, you may wonder, um, man, this guy's got no tools. How did he ever build real speakers? Uh, so back 20 plus years ago, I was actually working with a master cabinet maker. And so I was doing the designing on CAD and then I would give him the CAD drawings. A lot of times I'd go over there and give him a hand. Um, so he would, uh, he had a big, you know, full-blown wood workshop. So we would order up the material, um, you know, and I mean, he knew what he was doing. He used to, uh, he was not only a master cabinet maker, so putting high-end cabinetry in homes, but he was also like before that, that so he was doing that as a retired gentleman. Um, prior to that, he was actually, um, I believe a college professor teaching cabinet making. Um, so yeah. He was pretty good, man, and he uh, he did all my cabinet work. He had all the tools we needed. Um, basically, all I had to do was draw it up and explain to him what I was looking for, and he made it happen for me. So, uh, yeah, I miss having a cabinet maker. I have built my own cabinets. <clears throat> they are uh, not professional grade. I'd say kind of middle of the road, um, but yeah. Boy, I miss the days of having a cabinet maker. So let's find something that's 3 16ths of an inch that I could scribe a line with. And it may have even been my tape measure for all I know. It's pretty close. I mean, like if I went like this, would that be a little too much? Something in between that. I know. That might just do it. The other thing, uh, not only did I have a cabinet maker, but I also had a 2,500 square foot uh, facility I was renting to assemble and test the speakers in. So that made it a whole bunch easier. And yeah, I had a ton of tools there for the assembly and all that. That was many, many years ago though. So I guess you could say I'm kind of getting back into it. So this is kind of what I had in mind. Sticking this in there is kind of a gauge or a guide, just so I can scribe with this. I'll try it and see. Looks about right, based on the line. Kids, don't try this at home. <laughs> I'm working upside down now. What a hack, huh? <laughs> don't worry, it'll look fine. <laughs> See the scribe line there? Let's see how we did as far as our measurement goes. Well, let's go this way. 
We needed three sixteenths, right? I'll try to focus this guy. One, two, three. Just a hair over three. So yeah, that'll work perfect. I just got to stay inside that scribe line and I'll be fine. All right, so I've been trying to figure out the best way to open up this whole hack style. I'm going to bring you on in closer so you can kind of watch me. And uh, I think I got to figure it out. But anyway, I got the first cabinet to try. And if it works out good, then I'll go ahead and do it on the second one. So my first thought is to take and basically cut down to that scored line or very close to it and go ahead and, you know, do that across or all the way around and then come back around with the saw and cut that out. The other thought that I had was to hit it at an angle, kind of the same idea, and then go around it with the file. So I'm not not quite sure which way I'm gonna go yet. Um, I guess six to one, half dozen to the other. I could probably try this first. So if you could see that line right there, that scored line. Now we just, you know, took that cut all the way down to the line. That's not going to be the fastest way to do it for sure and i'm sure there's much much better ways to do it but this is the way i'm going to try it on this if i was smart i'd be an affiliate for amazon and put a link for this knife this thing is incredible so now this one i went a little bit overboard with and that's going to happen as I make my way around here, it's bound to be a little bit different. So I'm going to go ahead and try to go all the way around there like that. And then I'll show you what I wind up with. All right. Well, I'm going to get to cutting these uh, holes out of here. <laughs> um, not looking real forward to it, but I'm going to try to make the best of it. And hopefully it won't be too hard. Um, the plan is, is to use my fancy Japanese steel all-purpose saw. And I've already drawn a line around here. So I'm just going to take and kind of cut through here. So I got kind of like notches that I can just trim through. And uh, we'll see how that turns out. So um, I've got two cabinets to play with. So I might learn something on the first one that I apply to the second one, but for right now I think that that's the answer. So um, I'll go ahead and start doing that and let's hope it turns out good. so far it's not taking that out you know very long at all um, it's going by pretty quick um, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the camera move you down here where hopefully you can see a little bit better all right so th this is what it looks like what I've got going on here and I've got this line going around here that I did with a magic marker and then I kind of scored the surface so I could have a definite outline while I'm doing this. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, as I make these last um, couple of cuts here, uh, as you can see, I've just gone all the way around here. And I've made these cuts down to my scragged line here. Uh, once I get all these little guys sectioned off in here, all these little segments, I'm gonna try to run around it with the saw and just knock them out. And hopefully what I'll wind up with is, you know, a fairly even hole uh, that I can just run a file around and smooth out. You know, I'm gonna stop right here just for a moment to talk about the MDF slash flake board that they use to make these cabinets. The cheaper cabinets have cheaper materials and luckily they're very easy to cut through on the downside there's parts with a lot of glue parts with a lot of flake uh, so depending on where you're at in the material it could be going real smooth and cutting right through it or you might get hung up on something uh, that something is usually like an extra glob of resin or something like that that's in the uh, in the mdf um, anyway just wanted to show you that real quick because if you're going along fine and it's perfect, but then all of a sudden you come to kind of a screeching halt uh, or the saw veers off in one direction or something, you know why. So there it is in the rough. Now I'm going to run a file around it. Success. Now let's see if the driver fits. And voila, it fits. All right. So you pretty much get the gist of how I, you know, opened up this hole. I mean, it really wasn't too awful hard. Um, timing myself, I'd say it took maybe a half an hour. And I can still clean it up a little bit more. Um, which I will, you know, I, I don't, I want to get it as round looking as I can. All right, well, okay, so this is pretty much wrapped up. I, uh, you know, I've got my hole opened up. I've got it semi-cleaned up, pretty much as good as it's gonna get. I'm not too worried about it. Um, it's gonna be sealed, you know, by the speaker. So, yeah, and the most important thing is that the woofer actually fits. Yeah, that's what the new driver will look like in there. Actually, I could kind of show you what all the speakers, speakers will look like in there. All right, so voila. So when I'm when I'm actually done with these all together, that's what they'll look like. Not too thrilled that this is kind of a gray color mid range. We'll see how it sounds though. When I come back in the next video, I'll most likely start playing around with mixing and matching and replacing parts 
So like I might start with the woofer, just leave the cabinet stock, uh, original mid-range and tweeter, but change out the woofer, then maybe try the tweeter, maybe the tw tweeter and the woofer, um, you know, just messing around like as if I was, well, if I bought a woofer, would it help it? You know, if I bought a new tweeter, would it make it sound better? Um, and yeah, eventually uh, I'll put the crossover in there and I'll run the crossover with the original drivers and then load them up with the drivers that I chose to replace the originals. And uh, hopefully it all turns out well. We don't know until we try. <laughs> well, thanks again for joining me. Take care.